hello people of the internet yes i've got the curtains open the sun has passed over the yard arm as we call it and now i have natural light <laughs> um and it's not quite as hell hot as it has been so if you watch my latest haul you will see that i purchased these from arteza um, in their sale their 50 percent off sale and these are their original everblend art markers in the nice case so they're not the the re-release that they've just done you know renaming the numbers or whatever and i wasn't going to swatch them but i am going to swatch them and you know me i have made myself a swatch chart and um yeah so that is what i am going to do so i've removed this strappy thing and you saw me take that off already in the haul video so let's let's get into them and what i've done hold on i have um put them so these are in rows of 12 so i've put this in the rows of 12 so it goes um like this so this is the first block this is the second block this is the third block this is the fourth block and this is the fifth block it was really difficult to find anywhere online that had the color names Ooh. I've just propped it up like a little stat. Oh, that's that's nice. Can you see what I've done there? No, probably not. But... Ooh, that's nice. Very nice. Let's tuck that in there. Get that label tucked away as well. Get you all standing up. And uh, oh, we need a. We need. Oh my word! What have I done to you? Oh, that's where I was showing you the side. Let me zoom you in. <laughs> get the plastic sheet that I like using to protect my work surface which I do um, in case you're wondering I shall show you now I clean my plastic sheet with I've got to find a cloth where's my cloth gone you usually have a blue ink cloth yes. here <laughs> What I do is I use some uh, hand sanitizer, alcohol based hand sanitizer to clean this so that when a bit of alcohol goes through, alcohol marker goes through on it and it it doesn't soak in like it does with paper so it sits on the surface so sometimes when you re-wet the um, re-wet re this by the paper on top of it getting wet the old colour can soak through now one of the reasons why I prefer using a plastic cover plastic sheet rather than a paper sheet is because it gives you a little bit extra workable time I want to call it that if you think if you had plain paper underneath here when you put the pen on it soaks through and it dries through on both sheets when you, when you do it on this, it soaks through and it sits for a while because it doesn't absorb into this. It sits just a little bit longer. So you don't get so many streaks because um, it isn't just being sucked into two sheets of paper. Whenever I'm videoing, I always kick that thing that's under my desk. <laughs> isn't that annoying? Right. Zoom, de zoom, zoom. Turn you on a little straightness angle. Oh, I just noticed it's got a little peachy colour there. I must have forgot to print it in grayscale. Slurp of the old tea. As usual. And start with 9425 Peach. Now, I have left a box here for a reason, but we will talk about that reason after. So I'm going to just swatch it off the... Uh, oh, I was going to do it off the thick one, but I don't think I am. Hold on. My husband came down to tell me he had a meeting. This is Peach. Peach. Oh, they're hard to get back in their little doobie. What's it? This one is Pale Peach. They're very squeaky <laughs> dry feeling this one is a colorless blender oh, yeah. 
There is that. Oops. They are really hard to get back in their little cubby holes. Right. Oops. That was ritual thinking that you need a brick under that for to keep it to stay. 251, glacier blue. Glacier blue. This is a grey. I think I'm just going to sort of hover them above. This one is 151 cloudy grey. The lids are not really tight, you know, they're really quite loose. Oh, that one's too bad. Next one is fog grey. Next one is koala grey. Koala. a bit better. Next one is sage green. It's like a green grey. Next one is dark chocolate brown. And that really isn't going to stand up, is it? Oh well, we just have to ignore it. <laughs> Dark chocolate brown. Yep, nice bitter chocolate colour. Next one is black. Sorry, noir. Noir. Next one is burgundy. Like a nice blood red, that one. And the next one is wine red. I would have put them around the other way actually. Okay, so that's the first 12. Okay, let's get on to the next 12. So we start with Sienna Brown. Zoom in a little bit. Sienna Brown. Next one is hazelnut brown. Ooh, that one went straight in its slot. You were excited about that, wasn't you? And the next one didn't. <laughs> this one is yellow ochre. No, wait, it's jasmine yellow. Next one is, oh, and the lid wasn't even on it. Oh, this one's going to be dry, isn't it? These lids are not particularly clicky. Uh, this is Arctic Blue. one is sky blue next one 
on is turquoise. Next one is teal. Next one is pine green. I wasn't expecting that to be pine green because that sort of looks more dark teal really. Next one is cerulean blue. is Aegean blue. Let us pretend we are by the Aegean Sea. And if you don't know what's happened to the Aegean Sea, it's obviously had an oil slip going to it. Because that's just looks like Prussian blue really. And then this one is sapphire blue. Which is a beautiful, nice, true sapphire blue. That is a lovely blue. Beautiful. And the next one, another blue, is Carolina blue. Or Carolina. Make sure you can see, you can. Oh, that's an unusual blue. That's, a, that's more like a denim blue, isn't it? Interesting, the next one is called Denim Blue. I'd have called that Denim Blue. It's a nice colour, that. Okay, now this next one. Sorry, we're on to the next section now. So we're, we're down to the third row. And this one, let's zoom it that way a little bit so I can still keep you. Sorry, I have to keep you on an angle, but with my head, I'd never. Um, I just. I write at an angle, so it's what it is. You keep swizzling for some reason. Let me tighten you up. There you go. Right. Denim blue. Obviously, whoever labelled these wears deep dark denim jeans. Probably would have called that one indigo myself. Next one is called... Mykonos blue, so off we go to Greece where they have the beautiful blue houses and yeah, actually that's probably that colour. Next one, We're into the green family now, this is forest green. So there was a green up there, wasn't there? Oh no, that was turquoise and pine green. I don't know what, yeah, pine green they've really put with the blues. I probably would put these in a different order. Got nice fine points actually. Um, I'm going to compare the points at the end with my other pens. This is jungle green, which looks very similar to, just to make sure I've got jungle green, I did. It looks very similar to the one above it, forest green. But then again, the forest and the jungle are both full of trees. This the next one is called cactus green. And obviously cactuses grow in both the forest and the jungle. Because there's not much difference between those three colours. The next one is apple green. Let's just hope that apples don't grow in the forest. Look, they look like they have their own orchard. Yeah, it's a slightly different green. The next green is pale green. Nice green, nice colour. 
one is olive green and it is really a nice olive green like fresh Greek green olives looks a bit darker on camera lime green a bit darker than the lime but still a nice green really like that actually the names are pretty representative next one is neon yellow and it is I'm never a fan of neons next one is sapphire yellow I always think he's just a dirty yellow, isn't it? Aren't sapphires, yellow sapphires, a bit dirty looking? And then bumblebee yellow, which is the last one in this row. It's a nice yellow. Oops, we're just coming off the, the thing a little bit there. Okay, that's that row complete. That looks like that. Okay, so next segment is starts with Tuscan yellow. Are we in? Are we in? We is now. The paper I'm doing this on is nothing terribly fancy. If you're in the UK, you can get it for Tesco's from. Uh, for 4 99 it's called the Navigator uh, is it 200 or 100 and something paper I'll show you at the end so we're in the UK and you want some nice smooth paper this is oh this one's called green tea probably is a green tea colour very similar to the olive no the olive is a bit olivier <laughs> this one is pear green Pear green, yeah. Must be a different kind of pear than that I'm used to. Kind of similar olivey colour. And more like a khaki, khaki. Right, next one's called sunflower yellow. Have we not already done the yellow? Or are these the yellows? I guess these are the yellows. Sunflower yellow. Well, I don't think they're particularly in there. Good colour order. Sunflower yellow. Hmm. Next one, yellow ochre. Oh, this is yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. That was my phone. Someone sent me a text message. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to give it my attention. I'm giving you my attention. This one is apricot. It's a nice colour. We have a dark peach. Next one is the million. Next one is pumpkin orange. Nice. Next one is neon pink. Which I'd say probably is. The next one is watermelon pink. Lovely. The next one is coral. Nice. The next one is Tomato red. 
or tomato red if you're in the UK. And that's the end of that line. So those are those colours. Okay, next row starts with number 410, rose red. Some of them do feel a bit dry, as though they're sort of on their last legs, which is a bit worrying as they're brand new. 411, ruby red. Is that similar to wine red? Wine red being there. Mm, it's a little bit lighter. Next one is crimson red. is hot pink. It's a, more of a magenta pink I'd say than a hot pink. Next one is fuchsia. Next one is blush pink. Next one is bubble, okay, bubble bath pink. I thought it said bubble gum pink. That would have made more sense. Never had a bubble bath that colour, but it is a bright pink. Next one is lavender. Oh, it's not like a grey blue, but maybe that's what lavender is. Lavender may be what a grey blue is. It's not the colour I was expecting to come out. The next one is lilac. It is. Next colour is periwinkle. Actually, that one looks more like it should have been periwinkle. Oh, they do look very similar. And this one is very dry. Them two colours are very similar. Next one is violet. Deep violet. And the last one is royal purple. Okay, they look really, really dark on camera. Um, they are really, really dark. We're not quite as dark as maybe that's maybe that's a true representation of the colours. I see these two. This is the reverse side, by the way. These two are very similar. These two blues, and then the two greens, the forest and the jungle. Yeah, I can see a little bit of a difference. Better on the back of the paper. You can see how dry that black pen was. It's not coming through. Okay, what I'm going to do now is wait for that lorry to start reversing. <laughs> I think it's reversing up the entire road. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually compare these to my favoured current markers that I use. And I use the, they're not expensive, they're just 
<laughs> what a beautiful shot you've got there of me with my case. Do we zoom out? A bit, there you go. It's the case. I use these Oleap markers. Uh, they were £20 for 80 and they're just a Shin, Shin Han company sort of colours. And so what I'm going to do is what I have been led to believe is that this number at the end is the same as, so for example, Sienna Brown, 94. We have in the Oleap markers, Brick Brown, number 94. I want to see how similar Sienna Brown is to generic Shinhan marker Brick Brown. So that's what we're going to do now. So I might have to do this one as I've got it in my hand. Out of interest, this the nib on my Oleap marker is much softer. A little bit rounder feeling. But the pen feels juicier. Okay, so that was 94. Next one, 92. Right, I'm going to grab the ones that I can grab off the top of my head because 49. Let's go as quickly as we can here. Let's have a look. Rose Red is 10. So I know that one. We have 10, and it's it's called Deep Red in generic Shinhan markers. Eleven doesn't exist in my set. One, one, one was one over here. One burgundy. So drop off the so, oh one. I'm going for one, which is called wine red. That's really interesting because that looks like the wine red, which is called wine red in the Artesas. But I'm just matching the numbers. Number seven, Cosmos, I think is one of these here, isn't it? Cosmos, maybe watermelon pink, that'd be 87. This is number seven, so we'll leave that one for a minute. Uh, 73, have I got 73? I have. 73 in cheapy pens is called Ultramarine. looks more like the one above it sorry an 81 have we got an 81 yeah 81 violet it's called deep violet in cheapy pens you can see how much juicier my old deep markers are because they're pouring over the uh, edge these didn't really go over the edge much that's that's the same color 81 okay what have we got next i've got 75 i know i've got a 75 it's one of my favorite colors that i use 75 uh, which i'm matching with 8275 lavender it's called dark light blue which is a bit of a dichotomy contradiction in terms dark light blue but it's probably a more representative name to be honest uh, next one 77 we have a 77 in this one it's called pale blue so I'm calling periwinkle here periwinkle bear in mind I'm not exact I'm not expecting these to be an exact match I'm seeing if they Oh, a match. What have we got next? Uh, 85, we've got an 85. No, 77, that's hot pink. 89, I have an 89. Yes, I have 89, which is pale purple. And 89 on here is blush pink. Different. I don't think there's much continuity in factories anyway. Um, what have we got next? 17? Have we got a 17? No, let's have a look at the yellows or the greens. 
86. I have an 86. I'm sure I have an 86. Got an 89. There's a 17. I knew I had a 17. 17. Bubble bath pink. And this one is called pastel pink. 17. Such fun. Uh, 77 hot drink. No, we haven't got that unless it's one of the fluorescent ones that I haven't got in this here. Right, what else have we got up here? 49 Tuscan yellow. We've got 35. Right, 35 in cheapo pens is the lemon yellow. So, bumblebee yellow is 935 here. nice to have a comparison with the colours anyway to use as a reference sheet. Uh, what else have we got? 42. 42 olive green is bronze green in the cheapo pens. green 59 it's called pale green and it is number 59 in my cheapy pens I actually really like this color in my pens it's like a muted green apple green 46 I have a 46 it's called vivid green in cheapy pens Fifty-six. Yes, we have a fifty-six. It's called mint green, which I've never felt is the right name for it. It's going to be blurry because it's focused on down here, but it says mint green. Fifty-six. It says cactus green. There's only going to be a certain amount of inks and a certain amount of alcohol ink factories. Uh, I have fifty. Three, no, 70, 70, yes, 70 I have is called Royal Blue or Mykonos Blue. Oops, I'll use the chisel. I think my cheapy pen may be a bit darker, but give it time to dry down. That is a nice blue, that Mykonos Blue. 70. Right, what we've got next? 72, I don't have a 72. I have a 71, do we have a 71? Nope. What do we have next? 61, pine green. 61 in cheapy pens is peacock green. 61, pine green. And 61, peacock green. If you might remember my video where I compared two sets of cheapy um, alcohol markers, you can see across factory, uh, well, across brands, the ink can have the same number but different colours. Uh, 63. I'm sure I had a 63. Okay, we'll come back to that. 63, 64. No, 74. No. 76 76 Carolina blue I have a 76 which is called sky blue oh, chisel again they're quite different colors I actually quite like that Carolina blue it is a different um, shade to all the other blues that I have Okay, 72, I said no to 69, do we have a 69? No, 57, we have a 57. Gotta say, Baba. No. Nope. What else we got? 36. No, 37. 
No, well, let's do the greys. I don't think I'm going to be able to match the greys. I remember seeing a 97 apricot. There it is, 247 apricot. Oh, I've got vermilion as well here, look. Oh, that's a different colour altogether. What is this one called in uh, 97? It's called Rose Beige, which I've always thought was the, uh, it's the wrong name for it anyway. Vermilion 22, which is called French Vermilion in the Oleaps. Well, number 22 is French Vermilion in the Oleaps. Pumpkin Orange 23 is just orange in. 23 is just orange in Tupo pens. I've always found this orange in my Oleaps to be a little bit gingery. Uh, O2 Neon Pink. Don't know about that one. 41 green tea. Now there is a 41, but I've not got it in my little set. 31. Okay. 87. 87. It's called Azalea Purple in my cheapy pens. 87 watermelon pink. This is not going to be like this at all. Because I thought that was Cosmos. If anything, 87 looks more like that one. Actually, it doesn't look like any of those. It is, a, it is his own pen. Where's my Cosmos? Because I really believed when I swatched that one that that looked like Cosmos. Oh, maybe it doesn't. So, there are some similarities. I think that's probably enough matching. And then I say, getting out more. Yeah. Uh, 44. Yes. Yes. We have a fresh green, 44, which is 44 sunflower yellow. No, if anything, that's the one above the pear green, isn't it? And then we've got 41, yes, 41 green tea, which is called olive green. And 31, oops, 31 we haven't got, 49 is this one that I've never known what the name of, pastel green, 49 pastel green. In Arteza world, 49 is Tuscan Sun. That and that have dried down very similar now, to be honest. So is that. I'm not going to bother to match the greys because they've just got a small subset of greys there, or the black because, duh. Um, I think we'll call it quits. Okay. So, ooh, we're in the back out again. That was an interesting exercise. So I basically swatched all the Arteza pens and then I saw whether the colour numbers matched the cheap colour numbers. So if it's 75 in a Shinhan pen, is that the same as 8275 in Arteza? And there are some similar, similar, there are some that are the same. 81 looks very similar. Um, uh, 63, these look different. I mean, these greens look... Mm, they mix and match kind of thing. But all in all, I think they're actually quite... The Arteza pens are actually quite a nice set. One thing I will say is they feel a bit dry. And I'm going to basically just do a swatch, just a quick swatch, not do all of them, of their <laughs> back ends, I was going to say, their chisel tips. Because I noticed in the case, all of them are facing, were facing, bullet tip down. And I'm wondering if they've been stood up and the, the chisel end is going to be a bit dry. Some nice colours here. Some of these greens are really different greens that I don't have, which is really nice because I like greens. Okay, so let's just get a fresh piece of paper. Ah, yes. I did say that I was going to show the paper. This is the paper that I use for my swatches. This is from 
Tesco's is 120 GSM. It is silky touch, ultra bright, UHD formula, all these buzzwords. It's just, I think it was either 4 dollars or 2 dollars It's really nice and it's thicker than your average printer paper. Really nice and smooth. I use it for my swatches because it's cheap. So, let us do some chisel chisel tips randomly. We do that black one because that black one came across dry on the other end, didn't it? So black. Okay. So I bet you any money that one was in there that way round, so the chisel was getting soaked. And then we'll pick this one. No, they're not too bad. Okay, let's pick this nice blue. Nice West Ham colours there. And let's pick, where's my Mykonos blue? Which is, the lids are, really feel loose. That's sapphire blue, very nice. They are nice colours, let's grab a green. Is that apple green? Yeah, these are nice colours. Nice. Grab that lime green because I like that. That's definitely an unusual colour. Certainly in the sets that I've had. Lovely colour that. Proper lime. Uh, a couple more. Um, let's do this vermilion. One end. That is actually a nice thing. The fact that the this is the same colour as <laughs> English. You know what I mean. Last one, one of these. This one is, oh, I don't want to do another red. Let's do a pink. Let's do this. Yeah, nice. They look really fluorescent on camera. And one last thing that I wanted to do as a comparison was these pens, which are the Slimline alcohol markers, which I really, really like. And I like them because they have, let's get one that's got the same number. Number 10, no, number 11. Yes, number 11. Number 11, number 11. So this has got no name on it in the skinny ones, but these are both, this is 411 and this is number 11. I'm just gonna compare their ends. Oh, how tight the caps are on them. And how loose the caps are on them and how fast they run away yeah they are obviously the small pens are nice and small and let's just get uh, another one won't be the same color the old leap Okay, so let's get Slimline marker, Arteza marker, my O-Leap marker here with a grey bit. So this, the Slimline obviously has got the smallest tip, but the Arteza has got a really nice chisel, uh, pointed tip as opposed to the O-Leap one, which is a sort of softer and rounder. So you're more likely to get in um, tight corners. Yeah, it is. Nice and come on. No, not quite as tight. Tight. <laughs> Tight's not the right word. Not quite as fine pointed, but they are nice points. They are nice points on the Artesas. Got to give them that. All right. So that's that. Um, Longevity wise, I cannot tell you. I can you tell you, Captain. But for what I paid for them, and they are currently on sale, I don't know if that's the case, they are, I think, a good buy. And on that note, goodbye. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye.
Thank you.